1952, I immigrated from Italy to Australia. I worked in the mine there in one place only for a short while. And then, uh, blah, 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 I got a job with a French company in Australia, Victoria, up in the mountain. And after six, seven months I was there, they asked me if I want to come to New Zealand. We were six of us. Where is New Zealand? Nobody knew where was New Zealand. Every, every so often, every so often, uh, we were going down for a, for a break, which was 45k no, miles. And then I asked even the girl, you know, where is New Zealand? Never heard it. So she got uh, her boss. So she has the boss, the owner of the area, right? He said, Johnny here, he like to go to New Zealand, but he doesn't know where is New Zealand. Can you explain to us? He said, I wouldn't have a clue. So they look Papua New Guinea, they're looking everywhere on the map, and they couldn't find New Zealand. There were six of us, like it. First time, all six. Being an airplane. You remember the flying boat? We left Sydney 10 o'clock in the night and we spent there on mechanics by 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, very good. <clears throat> yeah, here I am. I was 16 years old when, uh, not quite 16 years old, when I started to work in the town in Italy to my, my dad. So and you'd, you'd already I was hit... in 1946. Okay, so you'd already been in a tunnel. Hey? Eh? You know, what's, why would you want to work in a tunnel? My dad was there and ran the blood. <clears throat> he told me, don't start to work in the tunnel <clears throat> because you never come out from there. Your first job with uh, the French company? Yeah, French company. Yeah. Yeah. What did yeah. you do? Tunnel. Yeah. Now, me, me then know what kind of tunnel was or anything. Far we know, when the engineer in charge, French, he saw us, he was so happy because nobody knew where we were getting to. The, 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 the French manager won't let us know. Naturally, when we splashed down in Auckland, the, the tunnel was right there, right on the beach, not where we were up in the mountain. <laughs> And that's it. Fifty-nine, I was still working with a French company in Auckland. <coughs> and I got a job, a contract, <coughs> Matahina Dam. You know where is that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, I stayed there <coughs> with a French 1961 until 1967. And then they got the, the, the French company got the deviation tunnel here in Turangi. <coughs> yeah, they got the deviation tunnel here in Turangi. And when we finished that, I joined the Ministry World. On Friday, I finished with the French. On Monday, I started with the military work. I was there. <laughs> in 1967, I joined Codelfa. Codelfa. 
the next day. Why did you join Cadelpha? Why did you change companies? Because ministry was finished, and Cadelpha just came in, Italian company, and the Italian company just came in and got a contract. So they asked me if I joined them. But that was hard. I have to approach everybody because uh, the agreement was not because if I'm not supposed to touch Ministry World, Ministry World, anyway, I got in. Yeah, I got in, and uh, to top it off uh, was the, the mining inspector. The mining inspector helped me out because up in one camp just below Chateau was nobody can speak English, all Italian. <laughs> nobody can speak English up uh, just below Chateau. So they asked, uh, they approached me to go up there. Oh, now it's up to you to get me up there. See, to get away from the ministry work, because I was double up my money and more to get away from, from them naturally. So um, I asked uh, the wife, <coughs> the wife, yeah, because you say, where nobody can speak English. Because I like to learn Italian. And one day we go in Italy with our family. A dead man's mood. It happened. Oh, I meet my wife in Matahina Dam in 1960. We got married in Tucano. Mom and I, we've been together all the time. Matahina, you had all the Takaha boys there. Yeah. That's when you started working with a lot of the, the East Coast Maoris. Yeah, yeah. All the boys from Takaha. Yeah. Yeah, and then we uh, the first Sunday we were uh, for Italian. Yeah. The same weekend we move in. Ah. The same weekend we were in Auckland. And uh, we knew the cook was moving in to take over the cookhouse. At Matahina? Ah, uh, Matahina. And, uh, and we knew there was two girls there too. So when I got back from from Auckland, I asked the Rani if she like to come to the pictures in Wagatani. She didn't refuse it. So Lailani was, that, that's where you met Lailani? Yeah. At uh, Matahina? I met her in Matahina. Oh, she was in the cookhouse? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she, I didn't know that. She came down to help the cook to build the cookhouse, open yeah. up the cookhouse. And there where I met her. When did you get married? In Tucano. When? Yeah. We knew it. Eh? The big scheme was coming up in Turangi. And mom knew it. Father Nedakov. Mm. So we, when we get to. We got married on the registrar office in Wakatani. The registry in Faktani. Yeah, registered, yeah. But when we got to Turangi, we got to marry in the little Mahi church. Polly, what did Leilani's parents think of you? Oh, in the very beginning, yeah. oh, they were a bit iffy. They were a bit iffy. I got a boyfriend, uh, Ned, in Antiamori. Oh, very good of you. I hope you know what you're doing. Yeah, he's in Italian. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Here we are. I remember that. Your parents. What do I think of Lailani? I love it. Uh, they died one when we, uh, I took her to Italy. <laughs> I never forget that. 
Then they look at, what a lovely lady. You're welcome. You say, still welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my mother be here. <coughs> then my sister. My sister be here two, three times. But when my mother come over here, it was autumn. I took her for a walk up in the mountain. And she find wild strawberry, wild raspberry. <laughs> she look at us. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> in New Zealand, you got everything. Like in Italy. <clears throat> she went home happy. Part of the jumbo. Well, that's part of the jumbo. Part of the jumbo. So that's part of this. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the same thing. I yeah, see. Same thing. The same thing. Same thing. So the the muckers right in underneath the jumbo, and you're loading yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> the muckers is there, and they put it on the on the train there. I did. And the train is pulled yeah. out. Yeah. A locomotive yeah. comes yeah. in and. Pulls yeah. it up. When that is full, back up, another one come in, empty. Fill it up, and when it's full, go. <coughs> Carry on drilling again and blast again. So you're blasting and digging out. Never stop. Never stop. Never stop. Never stop. <laughs> all the machine, only stop when we having a cup of tea. <laughs> That's it. That was it. But how many times would you blast on a work shift? How many times would Twice. you? Twice. 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 And did you control explosives? Were you, were you a blaster? Did yeah. you do the... Yeah, everybody. Everybody. Together. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knew their job. Everyone knew their job. Okay. But if we finish drilling, <coughs> behind is the other one, all expert miner. Behind is the other one, you finish, finish drilling, finish loading, fire. Where did you go to hide when you were going to fire? You obviously left the tunnel. How would you get, before the blast, did you retreat down the tunnel? Well, actually, I may go on the middle, <laughs> at least. Yeah. yeah. You had to go back. Yeah, and uh, 200 meters away, and when you blast, you got to hold on to your crash helmet, <laughs> because the pressure takes the helmet away. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just, you wait five or ten minutes to let the dust settle and... Yeah, 20 minutes at least. 20 minutes at least. Yeah. So I give it time to us to have a cup of tea. Like. Then you have your cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> when we finish the cup of tea, we go eat. <laughs> and then what, what, did you, what did you do next when you go back in? Do you begin the, the, the digging out the... Mucking. That's the mucking. Yeah. And like mucking. sweeping down makes you everything... <clears throat> So you would, check, yeah. you would check the yeah, roof? Yeah, check everything. We oh. see rock in danger. <clears throat> okay. The steel, yeah. why did you put that in the tunnels? <clears throat> to prevent falling down the <laughs> rock. To hold the rock in place? Yeah, hold the rock in place. Okay, so what did you do? Did you blast the hole first? Oh, to right. See, we blast. And then we were doing half a face on the top, okay? and the, the boys down below, they would do the other half. So now we were blasting two eyes, and down below they were blasting once, because we were going carefully, see? But once the roof was open, the boys down below, no problem. Okay, so because, uh, a work crew worked on top of this platform. Yeah, that's it, see? And then another work crew worked underneath? Underneath, 
Mm. Okay, mm. okay, mm. that's very interesting. Mm. Very interesting. There's no steel in this tunnel. This is this is the Faka Papa tunnel. So this was your tunnel. Yeah. Faka Papa. Yeah, we got we done a fair bit without steel. Yeah, Faka Papa tunnel. Yeah. So you, you did quite a bit without doing the steel sets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good rocks. Eh? The rock was good. It was holding properly. Holding properly. Mm -hmm. And how do you test the rock? How do you know it? You just, it's easy to see that the rock is, is solid? Yeah, the way you blast. <clears throat> the way you blast. The way you drill it, the way you blast, you find out the rock is good. Okay. Yeah. Interesting, man. And what's this machine here? The Wakapapa tunnel was a long one. Now I can't remember the, the length of the tunnel. I can't remember how long was it. It was a long tunnel. And Maybe. you worked inside the tunnel? Yeah. Yeah. Inside, outside. Depend. What jobs did you do in the tunnel? <laughs> if they need me in the tunnel, I was in the tunnel. Otherwise, I was outside doing something else. Did you do the blasting? Oh, yeah. I was blasting every day. Tell me about the blasting. <laughs> I told you about the blasting. Those days I was strong. Today I can't lift up a box of Polaris jelly. A box of jelly is 20 kg. I can't lift it up to the animal. And we were using six boxes every shift. <laughs> Blasting. So. And did you, you have to drill the holes and then yeah. you pack the, the jelly in it? Yeah. Dangerous? Aye. Right. Dangerous? You got to use it in your head. Any job is dangerous. But if you know how to do it, it's no problem. I remember in one stage, the mine inspector was there from Wellington, and the, <coughs> and the trolley was there full of jelly to go in, to put the charge in and, and blast. <coughs> and the mine inspector said to the foreman there, because the boys went in, see? The explosive went in, and the man inspector looked at the foreman. Hey, they can't go in without you. <laughs> and the foreman looked. He said, Why not? <clears throat> they got more experience than me. In the way, no problem. Because the man inspector could say a word. What about things falling? Uh, if. Uh, it's a bad country. You got to support it with a steel rim, timber, and so on. But if the good country, go. You don't need anything. You got to chip down the loose one. <clears throat> so if it's good rock, you can just keep going straight ahead. Yeah. yeah. Bad rock, loose rock. Yeah. That's it. You make a roof. <clears throat> like the Italian. Attitude, <clears throat> like the superintendent and so on, they were talking to the, their foreman there, you know. <clears throat> he said, Listen, Peter, when the, when the rock is good, get a whip. Get a whip, push them, push the boys. But when the rock is bad, keep away from the boys. <laughs> See? In the tunnel, you got to spread good and bad. Yeah, and now and then you struck bad rock, which, uh, <clears throat> like I say, take the whip away. <laughs> it's taken easy. 
when the rock is good, get a wood, push them, you see. We, we knew it, which was good or bad. We changed the shift mostly outside. We tried to make it up so we can knock off a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes earlier, and the platform better be there. <laughs> Already. And soon everybody on the, on the platform, oh gosh, cow, 40 km an hour. <laughs> Some of the tunnels, there was a lot of problems with water. Uh, oh, many. Some of it. No. <clears throat> like uh, the long tunnel there. We, one say we struck water, we couldn't go ahead. They <coughs> last maybe a week. Dry, the tunnel dried themselves out. But then you go say, another 500 meters, no problem. And then water again. Mufango Tunnel was a little bit harder than the other one because they were go downstream. As soon as the pair go off, they have a big generator there. But by the time the fatal mechanic was there, by the time he was to that switch, to that one, was, was already six feet of bloody water on the face. Because the water was running down, see, running back. And the loco, you all have seen the loco motor, electric, all always there. In case anything happened, they were jumping the boys, jump on the loco and go. And the loco motor we have was, what do you call? Everything come from Switzerland was more proof than the watch. No water going, all battery, but it was waterproof more than the watch you were wearing. So the locomotive could run in any kind of water? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I see the water running over the loco. Oh yeah, the loco still going. <laughs> Everybody knew their job, that's all. That's my thing. Yeah. So you trusted the man next to you? Yes, sir. Yeah. And the Italian attitude, the minor, you look after him. See, if you're in the front of me working, make sure it's not rock over job. Make sure it's not rock over job. And when I was in the front of you, <laughs> make sure it's job. Yeah, your job to look for safety part. Yeah, you know? Well, no problem. So you, you had fun in the tunnel? Uh -huh. You had fun working in the tunnel? With of course you got fun. <laughs> like you may you imagine a zombie. A very young bastard. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> I, I give it to them a job uh, more or less outside. <laughs> Start the new new tunnel. <laughs> he was, uh, yeah. <laughs> But the problem, even the Italian there, they were laughing their head off. <laughs> because I would say to them, or oh, whatever, say to them, oh, you know, you got to do so and so and so and so. so. <laughs> okay, okay, honey, okay. Brrr, away they go. <laughs> they won't try to stop. <laughs> was it cold or warm in the tunnel? Depend. Sometimes freezing and sometimes not. <clears throat> sometimes freezing. No, in one stage it was cold, <clears throat> you couldn't do any more. You couldn't hold, uh, handle anything, your finger was getting freezing. <clears throat> and uh, kind of wearing the gloves, because after a while even the gloves, you know, they get hard. But when time to knock off, wash out. All the shower outside was going only once. And when we were getting the cookhouse outside, name it, <coughs> there was uh, the food, the best, and nothing else. <laughs> Can't care about that. Because the Italian general manager 
he have an attitude. They may work hard, that they go to eat hard. And each table, every four men, one bottle of wine, free. Everything was free. Beer was free. Everything. Day and night, <coughs> the beer tap all the way open. <laughs> twenty-four hours and twenty-four hours. When you came home at night, you must have been really tired. Ah, you go under the shower, <coughs> then go in the cookhouse, a couple of glasses. Well, why you go again? Remember the county in the, in the flax bottle all the time. I think it was a, the big bottle, the bola, isn't it? Hey, yeah, yeah, bola, barrels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bola. Yeah. yeah. Bola, bola, bola was. But lots, lots, of memory. lots of memories of the underground. Oh, God. Don't, talk, don't mention it. The best memory we didn't realize, like a I told you previous. The superintendent and I, we are there. It was a few feet to go to blow the hole through. Right, sir. <laughs> took the notice, the superintendent and myself. We were waiting for the smoke to come our way, but the smoke went the other way. So, the boys on the other way, they knew before us the hole was through. <laughs> we look one another, shake the hand. What do you say? Thanks to God, you know. And then uh, <clears throat> when the news come, uh, all the head come up. <clears throat> We broke the world record for safety, isn't it? 22 kilometers of time on the ball of the <laughs> That was world record. When you first got here, what was the New Zealand wine? Oh, was rubbish. All chemical inside. <laughs> here, like, you know. Oh. Now? And then they go there. The license to bring the wine over from Italy, that's it. When Cadalfa started bringing the wine over... The men, right? The wine. Oh, yeah, wine. Yeah. When they started bringing it over, were they bringing in barrels or...? I remember the county in the, in the flax bottle all the time. I think it was uh, the big bottle, the bola, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, bola, barrels. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. Bola. yeah. The Italian workers, they were used to it, to, to the wine. Mm. We were not drinking to get drunk. Mm -hmm. One or two classes, when uh, we have a meal, they said, you remember that? Oh, I remember a few drunk Italians around the place too. That was on the weekend. All <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Giovanni, what's your recollection of the Santa Barbara mm. festivals? A lot of fun, a lot of wine, a lot of beer, a lot of... Barbecues. <coughs> Lot of everything. Lot of everything. Name it. Yeah. <coughs> it was like a festival. So oh, yeah. It was like a festival. It was a uh, true Italian type festival. There was um, food everywhere, there was wine everywhere. There was Clowns and whatever you wanted, it was all there. Who we were working on the explosive? Santa Barbara sees a patron for 24 hours. Nobody touched the explosive. Oh, yeah? Nobody. Even I... in Europe, even the soldier and so on, they said, even during the, even during the war, they shook a hand one another. <laughs> the enemy. Uh, <laughs> hey. Oh yeah. So even during the war, the enemy, everyone would just stop. Yeah. Even during the war, the enemy there, the Italian here fighting one other. Santa Barbara is midnight. Santa Barbara. Hey. 
Everybody shook a hand. <laughs> from, from one line to the other. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, eh? Was it down here and there was a Santa Barbara? <laughs> down, someone, down the park. Someone took a barrel of wine. <laughs> like a big barrel. <laughs> Did they find that? Hey? Yeah, a lot of fun. Huh? But how come? Now I realize how come Codefa, the Italian company, the were Santa Barbara Day, they put up everything <laughs> to eat, to drink, and everything, everything free. And uh, here was other three, two, three company. Well, the ministry works alone because they cannot do that. But the rest never shut a bottle of wine or anything. <laughs> Not Italia, Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara. That's it. Yeah, but that's a uh, part of your tradition too, Dad. Hey? That's a part of your tradition too, the Italian tradition. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what day is Santa Barbara? Um, December the 4th, isn't it? 4th? Yeah. December the 4th. Yeah. Don't forget either. Oh, no, I'm glad <laughs> I remember. One of, the biggest, one of the biggest contributions the Italians made to, to Turangi especially was the food and, and the spices. All the food, I mean the, the hangis that I do are Johnny's hangis. Now I tried to do that at Dad's, my, my, my Dad's, we put one down over home in Rotorua. So I had the garlic, I had the rosemary, I had the oil, I had everything there, the wine. And I was standing there at the hangi pit ready to put it on. Dad says, what are you doing with that? I said, I'm going to put this on. Put on my bloody hangi, you take that back to that bloody white tie and you can put on this hangi, but you don't bloody come anywhere near my hangi with it. Oh, what a bloody rack of butt. It made a huge difference and, and, and that's, I've always done my hangis that way. Joking like you know, yeah. he was sharing everything. But you for fun, yeah, tease here and tease there. And then sometimes the bottle, oh yeah. <laughs> All the pasta come from Italy, but not pasta here those days. All the spaghetti, macaroni, even under vinegar, you know, all come from Italy. It was a merry chap in here. He was driving for Codefa, and uh, he got an urgent call to go to National Park from it, to Rangirek. There was a wagon, a railway wagon full of spaghetti and macaroni. Go and empty before the rats get in. So happy went, for it was running light. Happy went, and he put everything in a truck. Halfway down, was just after six, the cop behind it, yeah! So, John stop. You know, John said, what the hell is going on? And the cop, ba, 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 keep talking. He said, what the hell is going on? You know, after six o'clock, you are not allowed to transport explosives. After six o'clock, so and so and so. You are not allowed to. You know that is the law. <laughs> Listen, mate, you better read first. Macaroni and spaghetti. <laughs> mm. Alia and Maori, we get on well together <clears throat> because, I don't know, maybe the, the way we grow up, I was up uh, Waka Papa came, <coughs> working up there, <coughs> and they called me down in the main office <coughs> for some reason or the other, but the main reason, the father, he said to me, like I explained to you the other day, he said to me, Johnny, 
you know yourself, from the new contract, we have to employ 50% Italia and 60% and 50% Mareva. What do you suggest? Maori. Employ Maori. What? You employ Maori. They are like, like us. They like to work, they respect, and they like to eat, and they are very friendly. You suggest Maori? Yes, Maori, that's said. He did. Like it was not packed here, there, otherwise I was getting a hidey. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it now, I just think there was there was a great <coughs> relationship between uh, the Maoris and the Italians. Oh yeah, like very. <coughs> no problem. They, um, I don't know, especially with the Maori. Even the language, you know, <coughs> Italians were speaking Maori and Maoris were speaking Italian. <laughs> hey, the vowels, the vowels are the same, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> especially swearing uh, in Italian. Oh, yeah. <coughs> but uh, if you wanted to hear the correct pronunciation of a, of a sign, get an Italian to pronounce it, come out exactly the same. So, um, but no, there was a fishy underground uh, with the workers underground. They just had a bond. They were like a, like an army type bond where they all just uh, went to work together, laughed, played, drink and work hard together and um, the camaraderie was uh, Peter, work hard together eat hard together and drink hard together oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you moved to to the Faka Papa camp yeah it was all Italian all Italian all Italian <laughs> except one truck driver he was taking take the <clears throat> the spoiler away from the tunnel Okay, so your wife had no choice. She had to learn to speak. <laughs> no choice at all. And what about the kids? What about the children? Oh, they learned straight away. No, but was not the kids up there, see? Okay. Oh, uh, Giovanni picked up just like that. <laughs> and then Raquel and so, uh, no problem. <laughs> okay, so when you took the family home to, to Italy, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone could talk yeah. to, the, to yeah. your relatives. Uh, when <clears throat> when <clears throat> my son, The bus was coming up to pick up all the kids to go to school. <coughs> and my son, Renato, be here tomorrow, <coughs> he was left on his own <laughs> in the camp. <laughs> so <coughs> the bus driver, <coughs> Ron Martin, <coughs> he said, Hey, Larry, call his mother, get the boy ready in the morning and take him to school too. <laughs> so, Okay, he was not even five. So away in the next morning, he come back, and the mom asked, "How you like school? Too many English. <laughs> <laughs> Too many English kids." <laughs> your village you grew up in as a boy? It's a beautiful village. Beautiful village. We are 315 meters from the sea level. There grow anything. Fruits, no fruits, everything, everything. Yeah, I took my family back to ice. <coughs> to ice I took them back. And the first time was a bit hard, <laughs> but the second time they knew where they were going. <clears throat> they went berserk. <laughs> My wife and I now and then speak English, <clears throat> but mostly we speak Italian. She came, she was able to speak Italian good. <clears throat> now she pick up Italian language like that. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
No, no, no. Tell it to you, Daddy. <laughs> What do you reckon, John, about everybody working underground? What do you think of it? Nothing wrong with it. No. I don't care. I know Leilani didn't like it when Flavio was underground. Yeah, I know. <coughs> but if you're working underground in good condition, right? Nothing wrong. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Johnny. You're welcome. Yeah. Can I go for a smoke now? You can go for a smoke now. Thank you. Ha, 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 ha.